video is about still life. Okay, start off with a defined area, a size you can manage. When you're choosing objects for your still life, think about contrast, opaque versus translucent, square versus round, cylindrical, cuboid, brightly colored and monochrome, natural and synthetic. Also give some thought to the shape, the outline, that your objects are making within the composition. You'll find that some objects work and some objects don't work. Once you've set up your still life, take a step back and see what needs tweaking or rearranging a little bit. The dark fabric gives clarity to the objects I've chosen. Add objects also which give a range of texture, surface and material. Earlier, I photocopied a range of paper, film, and also some colored paper. The lines on the paper are giving me a variety of tones. By that I mean light and dark. Use these tones to describe the sides of the cube. Just use scissors. There's no need for pencils, pens, or rulers. Just cut out the shapes that you see. And remember, keep checking back to the original still life, just to check things are going all right. Also, with the collage, you don't need to stick things down immediately. That way, you can rearrange your cutouts. Next, think about the direction of the lines on the pieces of paper. This can really help you in your composition to describe the objects you're trying to represent. The sheets that are printed onto film or acetate might be able to help you describe translucent objects. If you go to my blog, ordinarymadeextraordinary.com, you can find templates for all these tonal sheets which you can print off at work. If you lay the lined film over some of the ordinary sheets, you'll see it creates a kind of crosshatch and this can help to define shadow and also form. You might not get this right the first time, so you might have to cut it several times to make sure that the form looks accurate. In any composition, a range of scale, that means big things and small things, looks really good. So concentrate on the details as you finish your composition. Consider rearranging some of the cutouts to ensure that this composition looks really balanced. I'm using tape to stick down my cutouts, but you could use glue. Thanks for watching Extraordinary Made Ordinary. If you like the channel, then please click here. If you want to see another video about painting and drawing, then please click here. I didn't think there was much point in showing off my painting or drawing skills. There's plenty of videos on YouTube showing you how to draw a perfect face, a perfect eye, a perfect glass, whatever it is. What I want to do here is to take things apart, simplify what you're looking at, and to make the extraordinary a little bit more ordinary and a little bit more easy to understand. So hopefully it will help your drawing skills and it will make your paintings and drawings a lot better. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.